Okay. Hey, Sharon. Yes. What would be a pro of um, community life? The pros of community life. Um, Hey, and welcome back to the second and last part of this series. So in this episode, we're going to be answering all the questions that I missed out in the last one because these questions are a lot more involved, if you would. So one of the questions was, what are the pros and cons of community living? And it was a very good question and it's a great conversation starter. So we did a survey here at Four Pit and a lot of people participated in telling what they thought the pros and cons were of community living. So we're gonna start off with the goods first. The pros of community life. Um, as far as I'm concerned, well, the pros are I get to explore a lot of my interests. I graduated from school. I worked in our promo shop. I was a secretary and a graphic designer for five years. I can garden, I can cook, I can clean, I can sew, I can, uh, I can make videos, PowerPoints. I've helped one of my friends plan her wedding. I can do some event planning. I sing in a choir. <laughs> I can play some piano. I learn music. And yes, now, look at me, 24 years old and I'm back in school. 10 years later, I graduated when I was 15 and now I'm I'm back. This is my straight-A student. I raise house plants. <laughs> it's not going very well. I'm, I'm still working on that. I play volleyball. I've played in a volleyball tournament. I was in Tasmania for three months, so I've been on the other side of the world. Anyways, my point is, there is a lot of opportunity to pursue your interests. Um, whatever they are, I mean, you just have good opportunities and you usually have good support, whether that's financial or practical or spiritual even. That's definitely a pro for me and I, I love it. A pro of community um, is a great support system for ministry, whether it be a certain ministry or even just a certain individual, both prayerfully and uh, materially and financially. With the amount of people living here, there are a bunch of gifts and talents. And the beautiful part about that is we are allowed to exercise them, they're encouraged, and the end result is everybody gets to enjoy them. The constant teaching from the word that is practical and applicable today. The overall support, comfort and security we have here is incredible. There's always someone to watch your back and to prevent personal destruction. I, I wouldn't trade that for anything else because I've gone through it. It's an added layer of protection for our young people, definitely. Structure. Our sick and elderly are taken care of, well taken care of. Accountability. Our children are sheltered from the wickedness of the world. Opportunities for training and raising a family. Working together. Godly teachings and a future for our well-beings. Our Christian school. Getting a good Christian education. And I'll stop now. The meals are fit for a king, not just sometimes, all the time. Continuous good Christian influence. Takes a village to raise a child. I have responsibilities and a schedule, and we're all accountable to each other for our actions. Daily interaction with like-minded believers. A family with which to share our joys and our sorrows with, and that will always be there to lift you up in prayer when you simply can't anymore. Especially when you're going through a hard trial, or you're experiencing a loss, or you or even have health issues. There is so much support and closeness. Okay, I like that if you mess things up with people one day, you'll always see them again tomorrow to make amends. So that's less risk of financial insecurity. I like that I can go to the kitchen and there's food on the table and I don't have to worry about making it at home. The close relationships between our elders and our young people. It's uh, by God's grace that we balance each other out in a wonderful way. All right, who wants to move into the community now? Hmm? But before you go packing your bags, would you have a con for us? A con? I don't know. There are challenges, there are negatives, but can you really label them as cons? Because anywhere else you go, any other workplace or group of people that relate to each other, there will be challenges and uh, difficult things to work through. So if it's to say it's a con, I don't know. Like the man said, there are definitely disadvantages of living in the community, but as would any place on Earth. I mean, we live on planet Earth. 
There is no place you would go that wouldn't have disadvantages. And so, yes, there are. There, there are some disadvantages of community living. And with the help of my church, we came up with a few that I'm going to share with you. That rhymed. I'm going to be reading a few of the disadvantages to you because nobody wants to be the face of the con. So, here we go. So, hi. Hi. Bye. <laughs> <clears throat> The disadvantages of community living. I think we can take too many things for granted, especially the physical, the housing, the food, the bills get paid, it's all there for you. Once a community tends to become too large, we tend to slack more at our work, knowing there's always enough people to handle it. So basically, where there's a lot of people, there's often a lot of little problems. Too much slipping through the cracks, you can't really fire people. So it's easy to hide out in the community. It's easier to adopt the spirit of entitlement. It's easy to coast and take advantage of the many privileges. The general security can hinder us from feeling the needs of the less fortunate. Viruses and flus, they spread like wildfire. Teens don't have enough family time. I guess they're always out and about. Friends are really close. I mean, you can just walk over to your friend's house at all times. But in the words of most of the people that did this survey, the benefits outweigh the cons by far. There you have it. These are the pros and the cons of community living. That was a good question. So whoever gave that, thank you. So my next few questions require a bit more wisdom than I have at the moment. So. I'm gonna take him to the hierarchy. I'm sure that's not the right word. <laughs> Do you guys wanna answer some questions that I myself do not feel qualified to? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So there's been a little confusion about the salary and monthly wage stuff and I want to clear that up once and for all, right? Yeah. So this question is, so do you get a monthly wage or what? Well, the younger generation gets paid by hours of work done. We have a timesheet app that gets uh, get to use and several brothers and managers hold them accountable. The salary they get is only for personal use. They still don't need to pay for their house, food, gas, utilities or vehicles. But community does not supply any personal items. Older brothers, sisters and moms get a flat rate salary per month which they learn to manage and save for larger household items. So and that's, that's basically the all the short of it. It's uh, money we use to discipline and to teach our people to manage it. Leave the amount up to your imagination. <laughs> yes. You guys up for the next question? Also out of curiosity, what is the process slash protocol for outside members or even Hutterite members from different colonies joining your community and does it happen frequently? Yeah. That's a loaded question. A right now we have Almost 30% of our current members are from uh, different communities, but, but they're all from our own background. How is the adjusting process? It's easy, no problem. Do you like it here? Oh yes. So, and, but apart from marrying and uh, marrying people, marrying over here, we've got no new people have joined us since 2015. Uh, for one, we're full, and uh, two, God has showed us that we need to grow and develop and build up the people that he gave us, that we currently have. So uh, we're not just here to live together. We have a very specific goal, and we use community to achieve that goal. And that goal is to build up and mature the saints of God, you know, to build character in them. Christian character needs to be built, uh, work ethics, uh, faithfulness, integrity, patience. These are all godly values that need to be built and, and developed in people. And they don't grow by themselves, you know, that doesn't automatically happen when someone becomes a Christian. Okay, well, people join us in the future. Yes, currently there's quite a few people on the list who want to join. But uh, people from our own background uh, always come first because it's easier. It's They don't undergo such a huge culture shock because they, they're familiar with our way of life. And so it's, all, it's, it's easier for them. With people who've never uh, experienced community, we've had so many bad experiences that we've had to write up agreements. We've had to uh, put action plans together and uh, before we take in a family. Because it's so hard for them. But the long and the short of it is people initially see the blessings of the community. They see the free food and the housing and the, the Christian school. And they, there's a tendency to look at community through, uh, how do you, how's that, rose-colored glasses. 
and nothing could be further from the truth, you know. Many think they just have to join and follow a few rules and uh, we can have a good life in community, but uh, that it just doesn't work anymore. So people who join us are actually joining a close-knit family. And most don't know what it takes to make community prosper. It doesn't take long and, and the very first idols of their hearts get exposed. And that's the spirit of individualism and independence. Most uh, are not willing to give up even their opinions or their rights or their strong religious hang-ups and preferences. That's usually what, what happens. In and they have a problem with the community's wealth, some of them. They have a problem with the way we operate, with our customs and traditions. Some even have a problem with just simple authority. Authority. They're used to living their own lives, they're used to um, living by their own schedule and their own preferences, and now they join, they join a completely different culture. And what happens? Yeah, culture it's... shock. And they actually expect often people to cater to their preferences, and that just does not work. And so we've instituted a plan for people wishing to join us. First, they're going to move into the area, we'll slowly get to know each other, we'll build a relationship with them and to see if they really have what it takes to join and to become full members. To come to church, join us for work, join the workforce, maybe even um, send our children to our school, participate in community activities, and stuff like that. And we, that way we get to, to know each other. We get to, uh, they understand us, we understand them, they know how we operate, and therefore it kind of alleviates the culture shock, it kind of lessens the blow of community. And so, for, they, and this would go on for at least three years, no less. And then both parties would be in a better position to enter into a covenant agreement and walk together. Because the Bible says two cannot walk together except they're agreed. Once a believer is convicted of joining, they make their requests known. And if the brotherhood is in agreement, they are accepted into full fellowship by a process that we call Einfalibum. Einfalibum means to incorporate, absorb into the body. And they need to make a commitment pledge to this body in order to get accepted. So there's a, there is a process that they go through and... And we learned that the hard way, let's just put it that way. We learned that people have various ideas about church and about community. And for some reason, what it looks like from the outside often uh, attracts a certain group of people. Yeah, it attra attracts a certain group and, and that's not what we want to portray and that's not what we portray. We are about the kingdom of God, His righteousness, building Christian character, developing people for God's purposes. And that's what we do. And we use the community to do, to do that. We use community living to accomplish that. It's not our salvation. It's, it's not our ticket to heaven. It is growing people to become more like Jesus. Community is the vehicle to accomplish that. That's my opinion on this one. Okay, now on to the fun part. Relationships and marriage and <laughs> all that good stuff. Here's a question. I would love to hear some of the traditional style in which you guys do dating and marriage. Okay, here goes. Howdy. Hey. So, do you want to get married or what? To th this. Um. You should probably go ask my dad first. <laughs> See how, how that goes over first, yeah? Alrighty, I'll, I'll be back. Howdy, preacher. I was just wondering if if I could you know get to know your daughter in a, in a godly way obviously obviously hmm what what do you say <clears throat> first of all what does John 3 16 say off the top of your head what does John 3 16 say oh I know this, I've been studying hard, so it's uh, a... <clears throat> um, therefore, it is a good thing to obtain a wife herefore unto the Lord. What? How'd I do? Oh! Yeah, 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 you run along. Go, go. Get out of here! Get out of here! <sighs> 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 
Um, um, I'm really sorry, of Adina, but this is this is too much. I mean, even even for you. So, um, howdy. I mean, peace. Adios. Yeah, I figured about as much. Next. Okay, so obviously this is not the way it works all the time. Mm -hmm. Every relationship is different. No two are alike. But here's kind of the general way we date and marry traditionally. Okay, can I just say this? You guys have gotten into the habit of asking some pretty sensitive questions lately. And so I'm going to answer them with these babies. They're my, um, this question is a tad sensitive glasses. Am I even qualified for this answer? I'm, I'm like, I'm single. All right. <clears throat> um, okay. So dating and marriage. So first off, before two people come together and start that chapter of their lives, it is preferred in our community that they are born again and baptized. Because, see, if your life is a mess and you, you don't know what's up and what's down and you're just all over the place in here and in here, right, left, or in here, why would you bring another human being into your mess, hmm? Go clean up your life, clean up the insides, and then start thinking about, you know, inviting another person into your life. That's kind of the preferred way around here. Um, because if you do that, then it's just, uh, it's a lot less complicated, I think. What's the traditional way we do it? I don't know if you want to call it traditional. It's more like the right way to do it. What we think is the right way. So let me paint you a picture of how ideally it should go. You have the guy, you have the girl. The guy sees the girl and he's like, hmm. This looks to be like the woman of my dreams. And so he goes and initiates a conversation with her or whatever, and then they just start getting to know each other. This step is kept super under the radar because we're a very close-knit family. People find out eventually that you're having this thing going with somebody else. It's, it's a talk of town because who doesn't love love or love to talk about love? Yeah, because you kind of want to know if this is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. And yes, we go into dating with the intents of marriage. We don't just date for fun. It's better that way. More on that later. And then once they figure out like, yeah, I think, I think we're compatible. We should, we should get married. Then they uh, announce a courtship. This is a public courtship. And then they kind of just, so they get to know each other publicly now. And then when that's, um, when that's gone on for a bit and he still thinks that she's the one and she still thinks that he's the one, he goes down on one knee and he pops a question and she says yes and then they get married. And then we have a big wedding and I wish it would happen already. <clears throat> Anyways, so that's what happens with that. Thank you for um, listening to my TED talk. That's how we do it. How do we date? <laughs> We have certain morals when it comes to dating, and it's 100% um, purity. You know what I mean? Do I have to? Do I have to explain this? Fine, I will. Okay, so purity. Why? Because the Bible tells us so. Turn with me to Ephesians 5:3, and I'll show you. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity, because these are improper for God's holy people. Enough said. I can give you one more. I mean, okay, okay, stop begging me. I'll give you one more. First Corinthians 6, I believe, 9. <clears throat> Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor other such people will inherit the kingdom of God. You know what? There are so many Bible verses on this topic. I'm not here to push anything down your throat. If you want to go research the Bible, go do it yourself. It's a free book. Last time I checked. Anyways, um, yeah. Okay, next question. Haley, okay girl, you asked for this. <laughs> do you marry people from outside a four pit or do you gotta take a four pitter or stay single forever? What's wrong with staying single forever? Hmm? I put my glasses up for this one because I need to stare into your soul. 
Okay, do you marry people from outside of Fort Pitt? Yes, we do. It has happened like a year or two ago, but there are certain criteria that must be met for this guy who wants a girl from here. Okay, so here's the deal. Our elders have invested a lot of time, energy, and they've sacrificed a lot to raise up a bunch of godly young people. And let's say there'd be a guy that will come in here and just, you know, take a good look around and he'd be like, whoo! I want that one. I'm just gonna swing her off to her feet and ride into the sunset. Uh-uh. That don't work like that. There are definite conditions that a young man must meet to lesso a girl from here. I don't know what's up with all these cowboy terms. So being committed to a church that holds and shares similar values as ours would definitely be one of the criteria. Another question, how do four petters meet new friends, comrades, as well as life partners? We actually have a few churches who we are affiliated with and who are like-minded in our practices and standards. So we hang out with those young people. So yeah, um, I think that's it on that subject. This is a, uh, it's a tough subject. It was not easy to make because I, I understand that we, we have different beliefs than a lot of um, everybody. So uh, that's just how we do it. Like I, I am not here to um, force any beliefs down your throat. I'm not here to tell you like this is the way you should do it. This is the way we do it. All right, please understand that. Whew. Okay, okay, I'm going for a nap. All right, so I told my audience that you guys would provide a better, well-rounded answer for a, <clears throat> a certain uh, sensitive question. Are you up for it? Why aren't we affiliated with the Hutterite Church anymore, is the question. This is a sensitive question. There's no question about it. In the end, God did it. So, as you stated in the video concerning that question, no, we aren't affiliated with any of the groups since 1998. Uh, we didn't leave. We were put out. We were put out. And we're not going to get into the politics of it all, but when you, when you set out on a road to the kingdom of God, you inevitably to become in conflict with the status quo. You come in conflict with uh, with religion, with the establishment. Uh, just like it happened with Jesus, with his own people, it just happens. And he promised us it won't be any easier for us. You can take your Bible. Jesus said they'll put you out of their assemblies and cast your name out as evil. Hutterite life is uh, very traditional, very cultural, and uh, exclusive. And we just began taking, thinking and acting outside the box. We started our Christian school. We began taking the teachings of Jesus more seriously. Our, our dad, as he was a senior minister at the time, he, he openly and publicly confessed Jesus Christ among the, among the church leaders, uh, that he's the king and the only mediator between God and man. And so one thing led to another over the years. And before we knew it, we were, we were in conflict with the church. That's, that's the way it happened. Uh, there, there's no defining moment. There was a few instances that happened that we could say a straw that broke the camel's back. There was a few de defining moments like that that happened along the road and, and we were humans. We didn't do everything perfect. We messed up too, but God was in it and God wanted to use us and to build us up and to, for a purpose that uh, we believe is now starting to come into focus. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you all for answering the questions for me. You're welcome. You're I appreciate welcome. it. And we, we trust the Lord will use it for His glory. Congratulations. You have reached the end of the question and answering series. Thanks for watching and thanks for your questions and thanks for your really nice comments you leave me. But most of all, I want to thank my community for their participation and their support in making these videos. Thank you for participating, your faces and your voice and your opinions and just, yeah. I couldn't have done this without y'all, so thanks for it. Like I said in the last video, the next Q&A is going to be in a while. Because this process shaved a few years off my life. It wasn't in my comfort zone is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's gonna be it and um, can I just get back to making some real videos now? Thank you for watching the subscribe and hit that like button.